I'm going to do a, a, a polymer demonstration. Uh, polymers are very, very interesting materials. Um, we think of polymers as artificial, but today we're going to look at a natural polymer. There are many natural polymers. Our bodies contain a lot of them. We're going to look at a natural polymer that actually comes from kelp and seaweed, brown algae. And this is actually harvested from those algae. And I just want to show you at first what the solid looks like. This is sodium alginate. And what we have here is just basically a sort of a cream colored powder. That's all it is. Okay, That's called sodium alginate. Now, when you add water to the sodium alginate, what you get is a very thick, viscous liquid, a gel. Basically, what happens is that that polymer absorbs the water and forms this swollen network. It's not a solution. It's a gel. And if we look at, and I've drawn some up, but it still flows. Now, what I'm going to do is take that sodium alginate, which, again, is a natural polymer, comes from kelp and seaweed. I'm going to add it, first of all, to some calcium chloride solution. And I'm just going to go ahead and kind of drip that into that solution. Not seeing too much yet. And I'm going to do this several times. And let's just watch as I do it. I'm first of all going to add it to the calcium chloride. And I'm going to keep adding some more here just because you'll see at the end I want to draw out my products and what they look like. So I'm adding that, trying to add that more or less in one continuous stream there. And that's pretty good. I can already see the products. I don't know whether you can. That'll be a surprise. And I'm going to do the same thing and add it to the... Uh, copper chloride. This, as I said, is a very thick, viscous gel, and so it's kind of hard to draw up a lot at one time. And I want to try to add that, if I can, there we go, in one stream rather than in lots of little drops. And let's go ahead and add a bit more there so that we get plenty of product to look at here. Again, very thick polymer gel. Let's go ahead and add that in one stream. There we go. Copper chloride CuCl2 is my second beaker here. The first beaker had some calcium chloride. Now what happens? We had sodium alginate. I add that to the calcium chloride and I essentially get what I affectionately refer to as the gummy worm polymer. Remember, this is a natural polymer. I'm going to go ahead and put that in that dish here, and we'll, we'll take a look at that later. There's actually another one in there. I might leave that in there for now. It's kind of a, I'm going to see if I can get it as one worm. There it is. Is that a good picture of that? Okay, we've got some calcium alginate being formed there. We're going to talk about what happened. But before we do that, let's take a look at what they look like in the copper chloride solution. And again, I'm going to try to get one at the end here to see if I can get a chain. That's pretty good. I pretty much got one really long one there, and it's bent up over itself. Can you see that that one is blue? What does that blue color indicate? Well, it indicates that the copper ions have actually been absorbed into the polymer gel. And let's see if I can get one of those, because I know it's, it's, it's a couple of different chains. Oh, there we go. <laughs> kind of entangle that mess. Oh, there we go. That, that'll be good. There's still another one left in there. That's actually one gummy worm polymer. That's what I call them. OK, so that's the blue one. And we can go ahead and just put that in the same uh, beaker there. This is a natural polymer. It's non-toxic. Okay, let's talk about what's happening. First of all, let's talk about the uses. Sodium alginate. You get, they harvest about 25 million pounds a year of this from the giant kelp and seaweed. What is it used for? It's used as a natural food additive. What do you suppose it would do to food? <laughs> and you, some of you are going, no, I don't want that. OK, it's a natural food additive, though. It is used as a, what did we say? It was thick, right? It's used as a thickening agent. They add it to ice cream, to yogurt, to cake mixes, a variety of other products. What does it do? It thickens it and makes it smooth and other things. And so it's a natural polymer. It's a food additive. 
what else can it be used for? Well, let's talk about what happened here. When I added this gel, the gel is a liquid. It is not a solid, okay? I mean, I can pour it out of that, okay? I mean, so it's a very thick liquid, but it is a liquid nonetheless, okay? What happens when I add sodium alginate to calcium chloride? Well, calcium is a divalent cation, Ca, Ca2+. Basically, the alginate is an anionic polymer, a very large organic molecule with negative charges all along the ring. When I add the sodium alginate to the solution of the, copper, the calcium ions, the calcium ions essentially can tie together many different polymer chains. That's called cross-linking, because now we have Ca2 plus instead of Na plus. That can actually bond to not actually one, but probably four chains, because you get what's called complex ion formation there. But in any event, what happens is when you start tying together those chains, you essentially get an insoluble product. And so let's take a look at that calcium alginate here, our natural gummy worm polymer, and you can see that it's still translucent so that we know it's got a lot of water in it, but now it's insoluble because it's been cross-linked with that calcium ion. The same thing is true for the copper ion. The copper two is also divalent, Cu2+, and again, that cross-links the chains, and so essentially, the sodium ions are replaced with either calcium or copper ions, and you get the insoluble polymer. And uh, the, cop the calcium alginate is also used as a food additive. Now, what I'm going to do is I have another one in here. And actually, I'll take one of these, I think. OK, we got that. That's our copper alginate now. And I'm going to add it to the sodium chloride. And I'm going to talk about what happens to that. Now, it's very slow, but eventually that polymer is essentially going to disintegrate as we add it, because now I've got a saturated sodium chloride solution there. What happens now is that the ions are going to go out of the cal the calcium ions are going to come out, the sodium ions are going to go in because we have a greater concentration of sodium on the outside. And that's essentially going to disintegrate. It takes a while to do it. Let's take one of these. Why not? We have a very large calcium alginate. We'll add that also to it. And essentially, that's going to cause it to disintegrate. Now, it takes a while, but you can watch it. This actually brings up a very interesting modern application of the calcium alginate. You know what they do with this? They actually spin it into fibers. And they make them into gauze-like dressings for wounds. In particular, they're used for burn wounds, to cover burns. And the reason that this is so good is because of the way it's easy to remove this dressing. Because what we said is if we add that to the sodium chloride, it slowly begins to dissolve. And so what they do is they use this calcium alginate spun into fibers for this uh, gauze, and then when they want to remove that gauze from the wound, all they have to do is irrigate it with physiological saline, which is just a sodium chloride solution. And what's nice about that, of course, is that now you're not, you know, pulling a bandage off a wound, which would hurt a lot, but you're just dissolving it away, essentially. So that's sodium alginate, a natural polymer. It's used in food. It's used in the medical industry. They're actually looking now at the use of calcium or sodium alginate, a lot of different uses. They're looking at it to encapsulate drugs for delivering drugs to the body, so modern uses. They're also, and this I found fascinating, um, you know how in this case it reacted, and I've got to add another one in there, I suppose. Um, basically, it uh, we, we pr showed that it uh, picked up the copper ions from that solution. Let's see if I've got another one in there that I can get now. There we go. OK. <laughs> um, it basically, the polymer has absorbed the metals. They're actually using, looking at seaweed 
to clean up aqueous solutions to remove and remediate by removing, let's say, iron ions or other ions from water simply using seaweed, which as we know is the source of the sodium alginate. So um, a very interesting polymer, I think, with a lot of uses and again, a lot of uh, interesting things for students to research because there's a lot of work currently going on so that students can learn about some of the modern uh, chemistry that's being done in a variety of industries.